Hi guys, so today I'm going to make my thank you cards for the people who ordered through my close to my heart VNA creates.ctmh.com in December. So happy new year. I did a quick um, close to my heart haul of some of the new items that came in with the new expression book and um, so I'm using a lot of those items. So really what I'm going to base this card on and <laughs> I did a little sketch with my numbers and this is kind of how I figure things out. This will make sense in a little bit but um, I basically made this from scratch. So I wanted to make a dimensional card or like a, a layered scene, I guess. But I thought instead of using all these different pieces, just build it off of the one base card. And I'll show you that in a minute. And then we'll go and you have to make like the front frame and then the layers, right? But this will make sense in a minute. So I'm gonna put that to the side. Um, I'm basing it off of really this their new paper pal bundle and it's so funny if you try to google anything about this like nobody has any kind of ideas out there about this yet so um obviously they make cute dolls but i want to use the little dolls to try them out first of all show you guys how they layer up and um just test them out but um and do something fun and unexpected so basically we're gonna use the little cat we're gonna use the girl images, you can do whatever you like with that. Oh, and I had mentioned before that the shoes don't cut out with the thin cuts. This is the whole Paper Pal bundle, which is $99, maybe 99 cents, but I don't recall if it's $99.99 or just 99 but Z4269 for the whole bundle, or you can buy everything separately and you don't have to get the thin cuts either. You can just do the stamps or however you like, but this is stamps and thin cuts for that price. And so basically we're gonna pick out some little things for this girl to wear and all that, but the shoes stamp right on the feet and they're the same shape, so that's pretty much why they don't have their own uh, thin cut to cut out, okay? So we're gonna be using those. I am gonna use a past stamp, uh, stamp of the month, and I told you guys I'd probably be using this because it's super cute with all the different trees it had, like how can you not pick this out? Um, so even with the little, look at, you can make your own little ornaments and down to the top of the ornament and the base, but you can't get this anymore. Maybe they'll bring it back if it's popular, but normally the stamp of the month is only available during that month and that is it. So, oh, I just noticed it has a little foreground. That's kind of cute. But uh, I'll be using probably just the leaves and the basic tree. It has a little nest you can pop in there and like berries. This is adorable. Little grass. How cute. I guess that's supposed to be like an apple. Anyway, birdhouse. Ooh, there's lots of things. Well, we'll see about that. But I was just going to make it kind of basic because we're doing so much else. Um, I might use this little um, stamp right here from this stamp set from Choose to Shine Card Making G1174 because I thought if I stamped it in yellow, it might look like a little sun and I can put it in the background of this... Um, little scene that we're building so we'll see about that but that's all I'm using from there um where else what else what else oh the papers I'm using I have chosen different papers this is white daisy cardstock it's their basic white cardstock I have a piece of this really pretty light blue color from the new um coordinating paper for the uh, I Heart Us paper pack. So this is the coordinating paper. It's Z, I'm sorry, X 7242D as in dog. And it has all the colors that coordinate with the I Heart Us paper, which is adorable, but they have a really pretty light blue in there. So I thought that was great. And a little bit of green for like the um, floor and stuff that we're gonna put the little puppy on and things. And, or the cat. And that comes from the cardstock pack for the enchantment pack it actually has three shades of green they were all really pretty but I went with a kind of a medium shade x5943 of course I'll need like black ink um, scissors uh, something to measure with um, a scoring tool uh, paper cutter paper trimmer and then of course you're gonna cut the stamping out with um, your cuddle bug or whatever uh, you know, Gemini whatever it is that you like to cut with I'm trying to make sure everything in my head is just like right right now and I'm gonna use a die but um, for the front of the card but close to my heart doesn't really sell like dies so I'm just gonna use one for my collection to cut out uh, in the middle of the frame of the front of the card so hopefully uh, you guys understand what I'm saying you probably saw the picture of the front of the beginning of the um, tutorial anyway so let me grab some other things. I think that's pretty much it. Of course, stamping blocks. Um, eesh, what else? Oh, things to color in our little characters and uh, stuff like that. So lots of different scraps of paper for the clothes and stuff like um, that. And we will get started. Okay, so I went ahead and grabbed a bunch of inks and lots of different things. But um, what we're going to do with our base card, this base card is six and three quarters by five and a half, so five and a half tall, because it's gonna be your standard A2 size once we're done with all the folding, and six and three quarters across, because we're gonna use this one sheet 
to make the little concertina folds on either side that you need for your card. So I just want to talk about this because if my daughter wakes up, I'm just going to end up decorating this thing, but we're not going to talk about it much, okay? <laughs> so we'll see what happens. But um, basically, you're going to fold this every quarter inch up until one and a quarter inches in, okay? I hope that makes sense. So I'll just start with the one and a quarter inch. And then one inch, I'm just going backwards, three quarters, half, sorry, and a quarter. Okay, so we made all these little lines and then you're gonna turn your paper over and do the same thing again. So one and a quarter, one, three quarters, half, and a quarter. Let me just make sure I got that half one started right. That feels about right. Okay, so you're gonna fold at that one and a quarter. You can bone fold as you go along, but you know. And then you're gonna fold back at your one inch mark, the next quarter inch. And then you're gonna fold forward at your three quarter inch. And then back at the half inch mark. And then forward at your quarter inch. And this one's a little bit tricky because it's so small. But now we're gonna go forward and you're gonna move, do the same thing for the other side, okay? So I'm probably not gonna do that because I don't wanna waste time, but. Okay, so forward, when you do your one and a quarter forward and then back forth, back forth from there. So you're gonna end up with, it's coming forward, back forward, and then a last piece coming forward. Okay, I just wanna explain that because it might get tricky later. And like I said, I'm gonna do the other side too. And after I do that, what I'm gonna do for my first layer, actually we're gonna need to stamp this, so let me, Actually, we don't need to stamp this, that's not true. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue this down. This piece is just standard A2 size size, so it's five and a half tall and four and a quarter wide, and we are going to glue that into the back of this here. You don't have to do that, but I just figured might as well finish off the card nicely. You don't have to, you can leave it white in the back or maybe do some stamping or color it, spray it, whatever you wanna do. But let me grab my glue. Since I moved here, I don't know where anything is. Uh, I'm getting a little better on that, but not really. So let me go find my glue. Okay, I couldn't find my close to my heart glue. So I'm just gonna use this Scrap Happy glue from the Rubber Cafe. Um, one thing about this glue is that it, um, it doesn't dry. You can make like glue dots out of this stuff because it stays rubbery. So you kind of have to use it for certain applications, okay? It can't just be for everything. Um, especially if you want something just to stay put, it might move around. How that it moves around? It's just, I don't know how to explain it. But anyway, it's interesting stuff. But um, that's from the Rubber Cafe and I think you'll only find it from them. So good luck finding that. But anyway, I'm gonna place that in here. And that is gonna be our first layer, okay? So I also have a little piece of green paper again from the Enchantment cardstock. And I really, I like both sides. I'm not sure which side I wanna use, but this paper is cut at four and a quarter wide and two and a half inches tall. And I'm just gonna eyeball this because we're gonna make like backgrounds for our items to sit on and um, for the different layers. So I'm gonna eyeball this like at what would be like one inch so that the other pieces are gonna be about one and a half. And you don't have to make it too wavy and crazy. I know it's like, I was thinking about it, a lot of times people put these huge mountains and it's like, well, I don't know if I go to the park, I don't really see like <laughs> a ton of mountains out there, but so let's just make it kind of gradual, okay? So now we have this piece and this piece. And you can make it so that one's a little bit lighter. I think that's what I'll probably do. I'll put this lighter one in the front, the darker one in the back. Why not? Um, and these are going to make these pieces back here that are gonna make our layers, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. So let me grab some of the stuff that we need for our stamping. We have pretty much that already. I also need a front piece of paper for the aperture that we're gonna for the front of the card. So I'm going to grab some paper and cut a uh, aperture in that, but we will talk about that. We can talk about it at the very end actually. So um, let me grab those other items. Okay, so first thing super easy, we're gonna stamp our cat. I chose a gray, so I'm gonna make a little gray cat. I was gonna show you guys how to like cut this into the paper and all that, which the partial die cutting, which I have a video on from before. So if you wanna do partial die cutting with this, you know, be my guest. You don't have to cut him out and then place him on that green strip. You can just cut him out like on a white strip and do what you want, but you know, I, I don't know. I didn't see that that was necessary. So I just 
I'm gonna cut him out on a colored paper and then he's done. So we don't have to do anything else with him, right? So I'm just gonna take my black ink. And since this is a fine, oh, and this, the new Close My Heart papers have two shades. So you can see that's darker. So pick whichever one you like. I just went with a lighter. I'm gonna go with the lighter one. I'm gonna give this like kind of a scrub on my pad here. But like I said, since this is just like a fine line stamp, even though I've never used it before, it should stamp pretty well. And there she is, or he is, super cute. Okay, so we need this little guy. I'm going to stamp, also, since my black is out right now, I will stamp um, my little gal's shorts and whatever she's wearing, so. So I wanna show you, these shorts are tiny, and we do need the white for several different things, so I just have a piece of white cardstock here that was like extra from whatever, so I'm just gonna use that. Um, some white daisy, and I want her to be wearing a kind of like a mod black and white shirt. So, and then her little shorts, I'm just gonna make them blue, just why not? Because I thought, well, white too would be, but then it's too much white, so I'm gonna go with blue shorts and a black and white shirt. And her hair's gonna be brown on brown, so I'm gonna take this one here, and this is my two inch um, close to my heart block, which I use a lot. I'm gonna go ahead and stamp that one off just in case because it just has some solid areas that you wanna make sure that the stamping is going on well. That looks pretty good. And these stamps will, the thin cuts will leave a little bit of a border. Look how cute that is. Oh my gosh, adorable. Um, they leave a little bit of a border, so just know that if you're gonna try to maximize your paper, just make sure that you leave a little piece for that. And then I'm gonna stamp her little shorties. Which, let me see, is it small enough for this? Oop, they're a little bit bigger than my one inch block, so I'm just gonna, I guess I can return her shirt. What's the big deal? I don't know what I'm doing here. All right. So shorts, and you can outline your shorts in blue if you wanted, if you didn't want a black harsh outline, you can just kind of do tone on tone. Um, so what I did for some of this is I just reached into my scrap pack. I'll show you what that looks like. I think I've shown you guys before. Whenever I do any kind of project with like close to my heart papers especially, I throw them in here. And then I go in here and choose them because obviously the paper is not inexpensive and it's good quality paper, so you wanna keep that going. Okay, so I have a shirt, I have that. I want to also, what else do I need to stamp on white? Oh, you know what? On the white, I also want to stamp that little sun that I kind of fashioned. So I'm gonna get this. I want our tree. Don't forget that. So I have this little guy. And this one I'm definitely gonna stamp off a few times because I don't want to um, mess that up. And I'm trying to grab my yellow. Ooh, I should have grabbed this earlier. I don't know if you see my desk is a mess. I know you guys see a nice shot, but whenever I take a picture like on Instagram or something like that where I'm working, it's like, ooh, Lord. All right. I'm gonna use Canary because it's nice and bright and opaque. Well, most of the colors are opaque, but. So I'm just gonna stamp that off over here. Okay. Actually, it's stamped pretty good already. All right, or pretty well. That one I'm gonna have to cut out by hand because I do not have a yellow. Well, I probably do have a little tiny circle, but she has a one inch circle, but that's okay. I'll still trim it out by hand. And what else am I gonna do? Oh, our tree. So let me make sure I'm not losing my pieces. There goes that, there goes that, there's that. Oh, we need to do her hair, but... Okay, yeah, let's move on to the hair and the tree because those will be in brown anyway. Um, okay, so I'm gonna do hair on here. Put this down. And this is the only so I don't have to cut um, color. If you want, you can stamp everything on white paper and just color it in, it's not a big deal, but. So this is chocolate on chocolate, basically. Chocolate ink on chocolate paper. Okay, so there's that. And I gotta bring the white back. So we can make our tree. And where's that long? Oh, here it is. Is that gonna work? Yes, perfect. So I'm just gonna make a little, we are gonna cut the tree out by hand also. 
We haven't crafted together like this in a long time, huh? Like in real time, a lot of times I fast forward, I put music, my daughter, you know. I just been getting up early and making videos, so sometimes people think I sound like I'm sick or something, but it's because I'm just waking up <laughs> talking to you guys. Um, okay, so chocolate ink. Oh, I might not have hit that one part of it very well. Oh, still okay. All right, so there's my tree base. This tree is so cute. There's so many different things you can add to it to make it look adorable, but that's okay. I have my tree, and then I'll do this part in green. Oopsie, let me tell what's going on here. Is it this way? It must go that way. Or does it go this way? That's how it goes. Okay, I <laughs> just want to make sure which way it went. Hold on. This one's a little bit bigger, and if you really wanted to get it kind of exact, you probably can use a stamping tool. That way, you know, you have it right on. Okay. So I'm going to use olive. It's a nice dark green. I like Ponderosa, too, but this one's good. Oh, my goodness. I just eyeballed that one. I think I might have eyeballed it wrong. <laughs> oh, so cute. I missed it just a little bit. So I might redo this one because, you know, I want it to be a little better. I might just redo it over here. And what else am I going to do on this? I think that's it. And then we got to cut out the body and do the whole thing on that. So I'm going to do that all at once. So let me finish this up and then we'll do that part. Okay, so I was debating what to stamp the little doll in. I was going to use white paper, but it's so sallow. I mean, it's just plain white. So unless you want to do some coloring, um, you know, with your you know, uh, Spectrum Noir or whatever markers uh, you have, that's up to you. So what I did was just grab some paper from the Classic Combo Pack. And it has, and there's lots of shades in that I would say that might be skin shade, but like, this one's a little bit too light still, this one's a little bit darker, I don't know. So I'm just gonna pick one, I'll just probably go with this darker side. And uh, we're gonna stamp our little body. And what's funny about this is I, like, I was like, oh, let me go find a stamping block, or a stamping tool obviously can do this. But then I realized that I have this big one from uh, Close to My Heart that I've never used. It's two by six and a half inches, so this will work great. And this obviously we don't have to line it up or anything, but I'm just going to stamp it in chocolate just because the skin is brown. You can outline it in black. You can do whatever you want, obviously. So I'm going to stamp it. And then we have lots of fun little things that we need to work on with this. now. If you're going to make this because, like, oh, you're going to give it to somebody to play with, your daughter or whoever, um, kids, um, you can put, like, these little undergarments on it so you would stamp like this. And for the little girl, if you just stamp this little line here, it makes, like, a camisole with, like, her little unders. Or for a boy, I guess, you have a tank top that's a little thicker and then it has, like, little lines for shorts. And it's all one piece, so these are easy to stamp. You just take it off and stamp it, which is super cute. I don't really need that because we're just going to go in with the clothes. So if anything, I'll probably just start with the little face. I'm always afraid of this because I'm like, oh no, what am I going to do? Like, <laughs> what if I mess this up? Where does her hair go? Maybe that's what I'll do. I'll cut out the hair first, place that so I know where her face needs to be. And, um, and we'll go from there. So what I'm going to do is actually I'll stamp her feet. Not that that really needs to happen right now, but why not? You can stamp that before or after. It's going to trim around here anyway. Uh, let me see if this one inch block. Oh, they fit just so on the one inch block. And I'm gonna go ahead and do black shoes. I'm getting ink all over my hands and I'm like putting it on everything, which is not good. <laughs> oh, that stamped really well the first time. Okay, again, if you want to use a stamping tool, that'd probably be good. I'm gonna try to look at this. Oh Lord, I don't know if I missed, <laughs> got that right. Oh, wow, pretty good. Okay, so um, let me get our stuff so we can cut these guys out. Okay, so I have my thin cut here. Again, uh, you can purchase it separately. If you buy the bundle, it comes with everything. So there's that. And basically you're gonna put it so that the little cutting side is down. Just center it over that. Oh my goodness, my older, not my older, my middle son, Doran woke up and he is a rambunctious fellow. So, eesh. And then I still have, finally, I did find this, my little washi tape that kind of helps me do this because it was like some cheap washi that I think one of these AliExpress companies or whatever gave me for free. And I will place it here just in case um, it tears when I pick it up. We're covering that with clothes anyway. And you can do this for all of your pieces. So I have my A plate. This is the cuddle bug. 
A plate, rubber mat just to give it the thickness you need, a B plate, my little guy, and another B plate. And I'm just going to run this through my cuddle bug, which everyone knows looks like this. Maybe you don't know, but this is what it looks like. And I'm going to cut out all of the shapes just this way. We're not embossing because there's nothing to emboss. You're basically just cutting out your piece. I'm sorry if the table's all shaky, but that's how it is. And we're going to cut out all our pieces the same way, okay? So just same thing. Line it up. Try not to tear it. I might even use the same piece of washi for everything. And there it is. So I'm going to cut out the little cat, everything, everything this exact same way. Okay, and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I just want to show you. Cut all these out at the same time because obviously they're small, so they kind of fit on here. But you just want to make sure that they're far away enough from each other that if they were to move or shift, you don't damage a die because it it uh, cut on top of another die. Okay, you don't want them to touch, basically. And this one's so cute, the hair. You have to be very careful because obviously you can't see from the top because it cuts a slit in the hair so you can slide her head into it, which is I think is very smart, super cute. I was kind of thinking about that. If you were not to buy the dies, oh, what I would do on that is just kind of um, take an X-Acto knife and just kind of try to trim in there as well as you could. Okay, so we can start putting some of our layers together. Um, let's start off with our little gal here. And so she has her hair and her shorts and her shirt. And her shorts. And let's kind of see where this should be. I'm not sure. I like that. That looks pretty good. All right, so let's move the shirt because I just kind of want to see where the shorts are going to start. They're basically going to start where her hands kind of go in her back there. Ooh, that's way too much glue. I haven't used this glue in a very long time, so it was kind of separating on me. And there we go. And then we're going to put her little shirt. And what I do a lot of times with something like this, I put it under a book or something to give it some weight because I hate to for it to start moving around because of that wet glue. So it's doing what it feels like. Okay, so there's that. That is so cute. And let's go ahead and put our hair on. I'm going to put a little bit of glue on her head. And I guess you can put it on the back of her head too. Which is probably the best way to do it. Oops, what did I drop? Oh, I dropped my son. I don't forget that. So I'm going to slide this in, which is super cute. Oh my gosh, so adorable. And I guess you're going to stop wherever you think is good. <laughs> Obviously, you don't want her head to poke out the top back here, but... Is that about right? Maybe a little bit lower. Basically, I stopped over her ears. Now, if you wanted to put glasses and all that on her, you probably should have stamped that before you add her hair. Like I guess I'm just going to put her little face, but I wanted to see where her hair stops so I can know where the face should begin. That's adorable. Um, okay. I think that's all she has, right? And then our other pieces are what they are, so it's not a big deal. So let's finish up her face. And let's see. She can have a little smile. I'm not sure what this is. Oh, freckles. <laughs> That's cute. Uh, a frown. A big smile. Kind of an open mouth. A little smirk. I don't know. Hmm. Let me choose. Okay, I'm going to pick this one just because the little mouth is super cute. It's hard to tell because the way it looks, but... See, that's cute. All right, because it's so tiny. Now... This is the moment of truth, because if you stamp this in the wrong <laughs> section, she's going to look kind of funny, right? Like if the eyes are too low or whatever. So I would say you're going to try to get it towards the middle, but also kind of near her ears. Does that make sense? Oh my gosh, this is so scary. I'm not saying near her ears, but like under there. That's cute. Okay, so hopefully that's okay. Do you think it's okay? I think it's okay. And if you had little glasses, or if you want to do the glasses, or these glasses, obviously you don't need any eyes. And this one you can put the little glasses on, and she look adorable. So there's that. And now we've got to start making our layers, and I better do this quick before Miranda wakes up. So the last thing I'm going to stamp is my little thankful um, from a stamp set from a while back. Where is it? 
I'm not sure that you can get this anymore, but I encourage you guys to get it from the last time I used it because I like it. But I like this little tiny thankful. So I'm going to stamp that on white paper, the white daisy, and I'm probably just going to cut it and I'll show you. I'll just cut it out by hand. And then I'm going to open an aperture. Basically just use a die. I'm not sure if I'm going to use an oval die or cert, whatever. Um, and just cut it out from this piece from the... Uh, so much happy paper pack and I just think it's so cute it's so bright so I'm gonna cut that out in my cuddle bug this is a four and a quarter by five and a half inch paper for the front of the card okay because after we layer all this up, stuff up you need all this going on okay okay ladies we have all our elements I just want to show you this is actually an outline of a different die that cuts out more intricately and I was like oh this is perfect size and it was just a little frame I was looking for something more decorative, but I thought, you know what, this will work because there's already so much else going on. So there's that. And that's going to hold the front of the card together, okay? You could go a little wider. Maybe I should have, but that's all right. Okay, so here's the moment of truth. You guys know I just designed this this morning, like literally put it together. So I'm just kind of winging it as far as how this is going to turn out. But let's see what happens. So on this back piece, I want to put it around here, possibly. I just kind of want to eyeball this to make sure it's okay. Put my little tree back here somewhere. And then we're going to have the next step being this one with the cat somewhere here. And then our frame is going to be in the front. Right? Obviously this is just kind of... Okay, I think that's going to be pretty good. I wasn't sure if the tree was going to work out for me. And then our little sun. Yeah, sure. Okay, so let me move all these things <laughs> out of here and let's get building this guy so our little sun if you're not happy I just fussy cut it it's not a perfect circle you can also go around the edge with the yellow or whatever you stamped obviously well yellow orange whatever color and the edges will be nice and yellow also so what I want to do here is add my tree to this guy oh and I did add that little red I think it's super cute it's so funny, Miranda always says, it's super cute, it's super this, or I'm super tired. And I'm like, why is she always saying super? And then I realize, oh, I say super about everything. Everything's super this or super that. <laughs> but I just think it's cute the way she says it, because she's little, of course. Okay, so let's do that one. Put that to the side. Ooh, let's not get too confused. Hold on, I might get ahead of myself. I kind of still want to eyeball this. And the cat, you know, obviously this tree is way off in the background, guys, okay? Otherwise, this cat is like a Godzilla cat. <laughs> My goodness. He's falling over. Okay, I'm just going to attach that there. I would normally for, I, well, for you guys, I should have just used a dry glue, like an adhesive runner, because I'm going to have to give it time to dry and hold it down and be boring. I don't want to be boring, but anyway, so I'm going to hold that down. And then, I don't know if I should attach her now or at the end. This is a tough call. I want her to be really on this frame because uh, she needs that sturdiness, right, to be on the frame. So let me see about this. I'm just going to kind of eyeball where she's at, I guess. She's like there, a little bit on the tippy top. Some more really close to the side here. Does that look about right? Okay, so I'm gonna let these pieces dry and then we will assemble this. Oh, I just wanna show you real quick, but thankful all I did was stamp it, like I said, on White Daisy. I just cut around it and then I'm just gonna like put little dovetails here just to give it a little something. And when we stick it down, you can also make it kind of have some movement, but I'm going to stick this in an envelope so that movement giant just like smash it. But if you were going to give this to somebody, you can do that. I've got that from Crafter's Companion. She always does that. Dawn, or Dawn. What's her name? Um, Sarah, and I think that's cute. But okay, I'm going to let this dry, and then we will assemble it. Okay, guys, I am going to use a dry glue for this. Otherwise, we're going to sit here and have to wait for this to not stick from one layer to the next. So what you're going to do is place these in these little areas like right in here see where it comes back up okay and then the next one's gonna go in this groove right here so I'm just gonna take a, a dry glue hopefully 
and try to get only about a quarter of an inch on that edge because that's all you have to for it to hang on to, right? And again, just kind of eyeball this. You can put it all the way down if you wanted, but I kind of had eyeballed it so that it was up a little bit. And we're gonna give that a squeeze. What I did find is that if it's a, off, even just, there we go, even just a little bit, it might do this, see how it's bowing, because you're exactly at the same size as this other part. So you can trim it down just a little bit if you get too much of that. Next one. Oops, I went over it a little too far. Maybe we have this little guy like here. So again, you're in that next layer. So if you can kind of see that there's two different, three different layers by now. I might have moved my cat over just a little bit this way, but that's okay. Okay, so this last bit, what I'm going to do, I think I'm gonna put it on these edges. Top of this glue runner, it's acting funny. Am I using it the wrong way? No. Weird. Okay, there you go. Just want to make sure there's none on the edge. It's gonna stick to the rest of the card. And here we go. Let me just put this on top. So hopefully if you haven't tried one of these, this is something you guys are thinking about. I know people are selling dyes that make this happen, but like it wasn't that hard, was it? And especially just adding it there, I think that was fun. Starting off with your own um, card and then just squeezing it. I'm sorry, I had to kind of get this close to me to be able to see what I'm doing here. Oh my gosh, that's pretty cute. Like I said, this is the first time I kind of just designed this, so you know super cute and of course you can do lots more layers but there it is hopefully maybe I'll move the Sun a little bit since it's still that wet glue I can bring the Sun out but there it is and then I'm gonna put my little thankful on here once this is I'm just gonna use some wet glue and stick that down right there and that is my thank you card and you can also put this on a card base like if you wanted instead of using the card base to do the the um, concertina like I did you can just put it on a card and then just start building up your layers with the concertina on the front of the card but so this is the card right here so thanks so much guys thanks for watching i'll have links to manycreates.ctmh.com for you and i'll see you guys at the next one bye now